Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Well, surely this isn't going to go right over my head. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm going to try. Let's go. Carl Sagan, love it. Although sometimes I don't under... We're doing it. In discussing the large... The fourth dimension. Okay. So one dimension... So two dimensions is like... Uh... Well, you can't even say a sheet of paper, right? Because technically it has a height. It... But one dimension is just a line. So. Ah. All right. Let's do it. In discussing the large scale okay. structure of the cosmos, astronomers sometimes say that space is curved. Or that the universe is uh, finite but unbounded. Whatever are they talking about? Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean, absolutely flat. And that we live, appropriately enough, in a flat land. A land designed and named by Edwin Abbott, a Shakespearean scholar who lived in Victorian England. Everybody in flat land is, of course, exceptionally flat. We have squares, circles, and triangles, and we all scurry about, and we can go into our houses and do our flat business. Now, we have width and length, but no height at all. Now, these little cutouts have some little height, but uh, let's ignore that. Let's imagine that these are absolutely flat. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of that being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. And the three-dimensional creature sees uh, an attractive, congenial-looking square, watches it enter its house, and decides in a gesture of interdimensional amity to say hello. I see. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees yes. no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his insides, a voice from within. He surely is getting a little worried about his sanity. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration, and so he He's like, look up, idiot. To actually What's wrong? Sorry, okay. aberration, and so he descends to actually enter. Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in flatland only partially. Only He's gonna a see plane, like a, a slice section through him can be seen. So, when the three-dimensional creature first reaches flatland, I need to shut up and listen. Jesus. <sighs> Enter flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in flatland only partially. Only a plane, a cross section through him, can be seen. So. When the three-dimensional creature first reaches flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen. And we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in flatland. Okay, but what I don't get is that even the ink has a height. Or, or if it has no height, isn't it invisible to anything? I, and, and okay. stamping so, the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in flatland and as the apple were to descend through slither by flatland we would progressively see higher and higher slices which we can represent by the apple kind of hungry for an apple now so the square as time goes on sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room 
and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion, and so not such a friendly gesture from things. dimension to dimension, makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above Flatland. At first, the square has no idea what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside yeah, his experience. Yeah, the dick. Ugh. Creature fluttering and spinning above Flatland. At first, the square has no idea what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. But after a while, he comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in Flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing Flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Getting into another dimension provides as an incidental benefit a kind of X-ray vision. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was in some other mystic dimension called up. And they will pat him on his side and comfort him. Or okay, else Billy. Ask, well, show us. Where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it and the poor square will be unable to comply. But maybe more interesting is the other direction in dimensionality. What about the fourth dimension? Here uh, we go. That, let's consider a cube. Okay. Yes. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment and move it at right angles to itself an equal length. That makes a square. Move that square an equal length at right angles to itself, and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow, we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares True. with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. That, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Now, Let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it, carry it, through a fourth physical dimension. Not that way, not that way, not that way, but at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is, but imagine that there is a fourth physical dimension. Right angles to those three directions. Oh, Jesus. In that case, we would generate a four-dimensional hypercube, which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you hey, a tesseract the because thing. I... Sorry, I don't watch really much. Which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And you can see it's two nested cubes, all the vertices connected by lines. And now the real tesseract in four dimensions would have all the lines of equal length and all the angles right angles. That's not what we see here, but that's the penalty of projection. So you see, while we cannot... But the... I thought if it's projected by shadow, then all of the angles are going to be messed up. But the angles all look good in this. Oh, uh, God.
imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. What I'm one of the, uh, he's a very smart man. I'm just not grasping it fully. I'll, I try to do that in videos, although often not successful. But my question here is that if, and I know like I can already see like, well, it, it's hard to imagine being in a strictly two dimensional world, but so there is nothing in the universe that is two dimensional, right? Is that, is that true? Because no matter what it is, it technically has a height, just like a, except a shadow, actually, because technically a shadow is just no light. And so it, nothing can't really have a, a height, can it? So I guess a shadow is the only real. But I mean, a shadow's shadow. Um. It's not really an object, but what I'm trying so hard to, to, sorry, I burped right there. That was rude. Um, what I'm trying to understand is in this, uh, two dimensional world that he's portraying and there's only length and width and no height. Well, it, it's still so difficult, at least for me. All right. Uh, to to imagine them being able to see slices of the apple or each other because if there's no height, then what is there to see? Th then th isn't something with just a length and a width completely imaginary? Like what 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 has a length and a width and no height? Like. And so that's what's sweet. It's like, instead of seeing slices, if seeing anything, wouldn't he just see, like, slices of the apple? Uh, let's go to his when he puts the stamp down. Uh, right, right here. Right here. Uh, right here. The apple. As he descends through. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere sees but wouldn't it just be a a not a set of objects but just the fir the first outline of that object how how would it be able to see all the way through the object if it's two dimensional it, it this is still so difficult um it's i like no, i'm not saying that i'm frustrated by the video or my un inability to really grasp what he's trying to carl's trying to do dr sagan i'm sure he's enough um but i don't know i just have questions i like watching this stuff and maybe someone will have an answer down there hope you guys are doing well uh i like these sciencey videos and i might do some more i don't know i'll see you guys next time bye